Welcome to this episode of uh, Lunchtime Devotion. Today, in our continuing study of uh, BWJ, 7th of June, we are reading the passage, uh, Acts chapter 5, verse 12 onwards. Acts 5, 12 onwards. Uh, if you can, please open your Bible to Acts 5, 12 onwards. So this is after the uh, episode of Ananias and Sapphira, the judgment that God made upon Ananias and Sapphira and said at the beginning of the church, and God wants the holy church. So even though they tried to lie to Peter, they could not lie to the Holy Spirit and God judged them. Peter did not judge them. Peter just told them what happened. But God judged them. I think that's important. So verse 12 says, The apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. And must remember that these signs and wonders are both a, a testimony of who they are, that God is at work in their life. And the sign of wonders is to just give them in the way the authority that God has given through the Holy Spirit. So they're working a lot of signs and wonders, uh, even among the people. And all believers used to meet together in Solomon's Colonnade. Okay, Solomon's Colonnade. Where exactly is this? I think Pastor Kopmoy did show you a diagram uh, sometime back on the temple set up at Solomon's Colonnade. That's where we did the healing of the man. So I'll just show you again, okay, because uh, there can be some confusion in this. Huh? This is uh, just a, uh, uh, actually is a model of what they think the Herod's temple was like, okay? Uh, as you well know, this is the temple itself, the uh, inner court, this is the outer court called the Gentiles, and this is where the holy place is and the holy of holies inside. Like. So this is a temple complex as such. Beautiful gate always face east. Okay, and this is surrounding it, the outer complex. Now Solomon's porch or colonnade are all these columns, okay, surrounding it all the way through. Uh, so they could have met on the east side, they could have met on the south side, they, 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 they could have met on the west side, all that. Okay, so all this is called Solomon's colonnade. But sometimes you see different diagrams, they give a slightly different. This is called a royal store, or some even use it in, in, in a different manner. Okay, so this is a picture of it. This is the royal one. Uh, okay, this is the other part that's double story. Okay, now you see, you also sometimes diagram put that as Solomon's porch. Okay, some people also refer to as Solomon's colonnade. Okay, so it can get very confusing. So to me, you take the whole lot, lah, all the four sides. Lah. Okay, so they can met anywhere as it were, okay, in this whole area. So this is where Jesus used to bring them to teach. And this is where the early church also met when they went to a temple. They cannot enter the holy place and holy of holies is out of bounds for them. So they met in the temple and this is where they, 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 they normally meet to discuss and to share. Okay, another diagram. This is the drawing as well, okay. This is called the Royal Colonnade Ten while the rest are called Solomon's Colonnade all around. This is the Antonian Fortress, the Roman Fortress. Uh, this is the temple itself facing east. Okay, to have that mind. So it's, they can have met anywhere along here, at the side here. Okay, uh, so keep that in mind, uh, even as uh, we talk about today's reading. Huh? So it goes on in verse 13. No one else dared join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. Now you are wondering, if they are highly regarded, why don't people join them? I think the simple reason is what happened earlier part of chapter 5. What happened to Ananias and Sapphira? They tried to lie. And because of the lie, the Holy Spirit exposed them and God judged them and they died. Under the kind of atmosphere, Normal people are very frightened. Well, I entered the I joined them. Uh, I say one thing wrong, uh, I mean struck dead kind of thing. Okay. So possibly that's the fear that came. But in spite of that, people were still willing. Verse 14. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their numbers. Now the numbers, how many you think they were? You know that at Pentecost, 3,000 believed. Okay. Later on, the apostles preached 5,000. Is the 5,000 on top of the 3,000 
or 5,000 is 3,000 plus 2,000. We are not very clear. Not very clear, okay? Now, these numbers are big, but uh, you also must know what is the population of Jerusalem. Okay, Josephus normally gives a population about 25,000 to maybe 70, 80,000 in the whole of Jerusalem. Uh, you've got 3,000 Pentecost and 5,000 new people, 8,000. 8,000 is the lower figure of 25,000 people, like it's very high. Okay, you take upper figure of 80,000, means you are close to 10% of people in Jerusalem and believe in Jesus. Also very high. Okay, and just remember this, just a few months. Just a few months after his death and resurrection in a short time frame. Okay, so we must keep that in mind, those figures in mind, because we'll take consideration of the whole population of Jerusalem, as well as the number of people who have trusted in Jesus. Uh, okay, keep that in mind as well. Verse 15, as a result, as a result of what the apostles, what has happened in the signs and wonders, people brought the sick into the street, laid them on beds and mats, so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. So they believe in the miracles that's happening. And I'm quite sure they did that because one, some, uh, a lot of them got healed and Peter's shadow, don't have to lay hand even, don't have to pray for them even, just the shadow go past and people were healed and delivered. That's the power of God at work. Power and God at work, okay? Crowds gathered, verse 16, also from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by evil spirit, okay? And all of them were healed. So not only people in Jerusalem, but people outside Jerusalem, those who were sick, demon-possessed and all that, they brought their sick to Jerusalem for the apostles to pray for them and to heal them. Okay, And this last phrase, all of them were healed, have been used in some ministries or some understanding. You see, Bible say, you bring your sick, all of you must be healed. Okay, But I think we, we need very careful that we don't only take one verse from the Bible and say, because of this, you pray for sick people, everyone must be healed. Even in the ministry of Jesus, Jesus did not heal everyone who was sick. Okay, when he went to his hometown, he couldn't do a lot of miracles. Why? Because the people lacked faith. Some came and were not healed. That's what's implied. Okay, so I do believe in miraculous healing, but I will never say that Jesus must heal everyone. Uh, that's important. Jesus can heal, but doesn't mean that Jesus must heal. Okay, we need very clear. On that, huh? So don't only use this word and say, see, all of them are healed. So all of you who bring the sick, all must be healed. Okay? There's not a right understanding or interpretation of this verse. Huh? Verse 17 onwards. Then the high priest and all his associates who were members of the party of the Sadducees. So we had talked about uh, the Sanhedrin before. A lot of the members are controlled by the Sadducees and also the Pharisees inside there. Were filled with jealousy. They became jealous because these apostles were doing signs and wonders and people were just flocking to them, following them, listening to their teaching. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. Okay, public jail, uh, as if there's a private jail. I don't know if it's a private jail or not, okay? but it's a public jail. means the place that uh, they, they put all the so-called uh, uh, people who are criminals. Okay, Now, you might understand that uh, at that time, Rome was ruling Jerusalem. Okay, Rome had their own way of uh, keeping order. But the Jewish authorities, the Sanhedrin, also had their temple guards. Also the temple guards. We saw that when they went to arrest Jesus. Okay, the temple guards came along. Romans came along to escort them, but temple guards who don't arrest Jesus under the Jewish authorities. So the Sanhedrin had their own Jewish police force, as it were. And their own police force, they have their own jail to keep such people. Where exactly it is, it's not stated. No, nobody has described where it is. Okay, we don't know. But most probably it's quite near the temple and all that. Okay, I explain why. Eh? Okay, so they arrested the apostles 
how many apostles were arrested, we also not told. But obviously, Peter is one of them because he's a spokesman. Did he arrest all the 11 or 12? Or only four or five? We are not sure. Okay? Because the rest are not named. Okay? But definitely more than one, because apostles. During the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. So even as they are arrested for preaching about Jesus, put in jail, in the middle of the night, an angel came and released them. And surprisingly, the angel didn't tell them, go and hide, because they are looking out for you, they're going to arrest you, run away from Jerusalem. The angel didn't do that. He said, angel told them, go, stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people the full, the full message of this new life. So the angels told Peter and whoever the, the apostles were, go back and do what you were doing. Go to the temple, the, the Solomon's colonnade area, and continue to preach the gospel, the good news about this faith in Jesus. So they went straight back to do it. Okay. So at daybreak, they entered the temple course as they've been told and began to teach the people. If I'm the apostles, you'll be arrested and put in jail. Would you think twice to go back? But these were men and women who have experienced Jesus, experienced the power of the resurrection, and experienced the feeling of the Holy Spirit. They were totally changed. Angels say, we do. I think they expected to be re-arrested, obviously. They are not hiding. They are up in public in the Solomon's colony. Continue to teach, continue to preach. Okay? When the high priest and his associates arrived, they called together the Sanhedrin, the full assembly of the elders of Israel, and sent to the jail for the apostles. Okay, we we'll stop here for a while. The Sanhedrin, we know, is the Jewish parliament, consists of 71 members plus high priest, 72 and all that. Okay, the full Sanhedrin we're talking about. Now, where exactly did the Sanhedrin meet? Interesting, uh, interesting question. Okay, now we'll go back to sharing. This is a drawing of the Sanhedrin. Okay. Thing, 35 members, 35 members, the high priest sits here. Okay. And whoever the accused is will stand before them. There are clerks, scribes, and all that. And there are students and all that. They can sit here to see what's happening. Okay. So literally, this is a Jewish parliament. This is just a drawing. Okay. Where exactly is this Sanhedrin's court? Huh? And in this small diagram, you see chamber of hewn stone. This is where they think the Sanhedrin meets, okay, to the east side of the temple. Uh, no, no, not to, to a north side, sorry. Okay, because temple face is to a north side. Okay, we will show another diagram. Okay, this is a drawing of it, what it looks like. Uh, okay, but all they are drawing, like they, they have found the exact place as such. Uh. Okay. Now, this is a drawing as well of the temple. F is the one called the Chamber of Hewn Stone, what they call the Sanhedrin Hall. We think this is where they met. So this is the, this is the south side then. Is this is east, the temple facing east. This is west. So this is the south side, sorry. This is the south side, okay? Uh, south side of it. This is another, another drawing of it. Okay, this is a temple. This is the chamber of the hewn stone. That's where the Sanhedrin is. Okay. And uh, Solomon's porch and all that. Uh, Antonian fortress and all that. So these are the, the this Solomon's porch and all that. Okay. So this is where the so-called Sanhedrin most probably met. Okay. So it's very near the temple court. Okay. Very near Solomon's, Solomon's colony is where the, the people, the apostles are teaching and meeting. Okay, so it's not too far away if this is where they are meeting. So that I hope give a better understanding that it's not very far away. Okay, the Sanhedrin met in that place and it's within the so-called temple uh, thing and the uh, Solomon's colony is just relatively near. Okay. Uh, verse 22. But arriving at the jail, the officers did not find them there. So they went back and reported, reported the Sanhedrin. We found the jail securely locked, the guards standing at their doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. 
So they were very, uh, very, very mystified. What exactly happened? What exactly happened? On hearing this report, the captain of temple guard and the chief priest were puzzled, wondering what could, what would come of this. So they were very surprised that everything is locked. The guards are in place. The temple guards are all there. Enter the jail. There's no apostle that they arrested and kept there. So they have no idea uh, what happened. Verse 25. Then someone came and said, look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple course teaching the people, standing in the Solomon's colonnade teaching the people. At that, the captain went with his officers and brought the apostles. They did not use force because they feared that the people would stone them. So the people were with the apostles following their teaching and much helped by all the signs and wonders. So this time, the captain went quietly and maybe whispered to Peter here, can you please come with me? The Sanhedrin wants to talk to you all. Okay, and so they did handcuff them or whatever and escorted them to the Sanhedrin hall. Huh? Okay, that's most really what happened. Verse 27, having brought the apostles, they make, their, they make them appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. Okay, and this is what happened. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Even as we hear what the high priest said, you notice something. He did not dare even to mention the name of Jesus. This name, this man's blood. Okay? Uh, as if the name of Jesus is so powerful that all the pantang, they're not to they're not to say it. it's for this name, this man, this man's blood. Okay. But Peter, Peter most probably moved by the Holy Spirit, feel the Holy Spirit. Peter the apostles replied, We must obey God rather than men. That's exactly what they said the first time when they arrested. Is it right to obey man or God? So this is very affirmative. We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. Okay, some versions talk about tree, as uh, where Jesus died, and they also refer to curses any man who died on the tree and all that. Okay, so the, the, the cross actually is big of wood, uh, signifies, some people say it's a tree actually, and just a small crossbar on it and all that. Huh? Whom you have killed by hanging him on the tree. Verse 31. God exalted him to his right hand as prince and savior. Earlier part when Peter replied in the Pentecost said he's prince. Here Peter as prince and savior that we might give repentance and forgiveness of sin to Israel. We are witnesses of these things and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. So now I think Peter is being received that more and more of what God is doing. The gospel is the same. It starts with repentance. You need to repent and your sins forgiven. Okay, once you have done that, God will work a miraculous work in your heart. And now he understands much more about the work of the Holy Spirit. And so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. Because he has tasted of Pentecost, he knows experience God's power through the Holy Spirit. So his understanding of Peter is getting more and more with each passing moment as continue to help by the Holy Spirit, revealed by the Holy Spirit, reminded by the Holy Spirit. Verse 33, when they heard this, they were furious, angry, wanted to put them to death. Okay, but we do know that uh, technically the Jewish people cannot put you to death unless it's so-called by stoning, uh, that's what is given all that stoning because of religious thing, maybe the Romans will all look like, okay, but they have no power to put people to death. That's why they bring Jesus before the Roman authorities. Okay, so they're so angry. They're so angry because they're still preaching the name of Jesus that they are cured. The apostles accused the Jewish authority, the Sanhedrin, of causing him to be killed, to die, but God raised up to the dead, from the dead. Verse 34, but a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, 
was honoured by all the people, stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered that the man be put outside for a little while. Okay, who is this Gamaliel? Okay, most, most people will say Gamaliel actually was so-called uh, presiding over the Sanhedrin. The chief priest is the head honcho. La, okay, but Gamaliel was a very, very respected teacher. He's not only called a rabbi, a teacher, but they have a special term for him, Rabban. Rabban. Rabban is a teacher that's more elevated, higher status than normal rabbi teacher. Okay, and he's he's a grandfather of Hillel. Who is Hillel? Hillel is one of the great Jewish teachers. Okay, in the in, in, at that time, we have we have talked about Hillel and talked about Shama. Hillel is the liberal school. Everything can run. You, 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 you find something, you don't like your wife, you divorce her one. That's Hillel. Okay? While Shammai is the more conservative one, the other teacher, Shammai says that only for infidelity, commit adultery, then can divorce your wife. So these were two great uh, Jewish teachers, okay, who, who gave all the laws, understanding, interpreting the law. So Hillel's grandson is Gabriel. So Gamaliel has very strong pedigree, okay, and he's very highly respected, uh, okay. And we know from uh, subsequent part of Acts that Gamaliel was the teacher to Paul, okay, or Saul at that time, okay. Saul studied the whole Pharisee thing under Gamaliel. You can't get a better teacher according to the Jewish authority. La. Gamaliel is the teacher. So when Gamaliel spoke. Everybody listen, okay? And this is the wise that Gamaliel uh, said, verse 35. Then he addressed them, men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do with this man. Some time ago, Thaddeus appeared, claimed to be somebody, but, and about 400 men rallied to him. He was killed. All his followers were dispersed, and it all came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean, appeared in the days of the census and led a band of people in revolt. In revolt. He too was killed and all his followers were scattered. So these two people are zealots, Jewish zealots, who rose up to fight the Roman occupation. Okay? And uh, when they died, the, their so-called rebellion, revolt, died with them. Okay? Because these were people who were zealots. Uh, and the zealots are uh, attributed to these people that came off. Okay? Verse 38, Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave this man alone. Let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, he will, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop this man. You will only find yourself fighting against God. I mean, you may say that this very wise counsel. If things are man, as in the past, you will fail. But it's of God, it cannot fail. That's what he's saying. Okay, that's what Gamaliel is saying. Uh, some people say it's very good, wise counsel from Gamaliel. But the, the big question is, why didn't Gamaliel, with all his knowledge of the law, Old Testament law, why did he himself try to find out the truth about Jesus? As far as we know, Gamaliel never trusted in Jesus. Not that we know. Okay? So with all his understanding of Old Testament laws and prophecies, he still could not click the number of prophecies that just fulfilled. So you're still not apparent as far as we know to Gamaliel. But he just gave a counsel at this time and said, it's for man, you will fail, don't waste your time. It's of God, also don't waste your time. Because you'll find yourself fighting against God and what's of God will not fail. Okay? So his speech persuaded them, the Sanhedrin. They called the apostles in and had them flock. Whether this is the 39 lashes or not, we are not very sure. Whether it's just a beating or actually 39 lashes, we are not sure. Okay? Uh, then they ordered them again not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Now, if you are the apostles, Okay, you preach the name of Jesus, you get imprisoned, delivered. Preach again, you get caught, you are beaten this time. What would you do? 
if you are released now, what would you do? Many of us will think twice about preaching again because it's a cost that comes with it. But the apostles were different because they experienced and know God and his power. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they have encountered worthy of suffering disgrace for the name, the name of Jesus. Day after day in the temple courts, Solomon's colonnade, and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaimed the good news, the gospel, that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the promised Messiah. So the, 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 the apostles were totally a different breed of people. That the more you, in a way, accuse them, the more you try to threaten them, the more fervent they become, the more passionate they become. And they continue to meet in Solomon's colony, which will be right in front of the Jewish authorities. They could see that they're still teaching. Okay? Uh, but then, uh, other things will catch on as we come along. Okay? So this is my short sharing for today. I think important lesson you need to learn. Okay? Never un underestimate the power of God. Signs and wonders happen then. It can also happen now. The same God, the same Holy Spirit is still at work. If you have a need, pray. Pray. Okay? And God in His wisdom and God in His power can still move and bring forth healing. But like I said, it does not mean that everyone who prays will be healed. But God can still heal and do His miracle. So you've got to look to God and ask God for faith and trust God. Whatever happens, He is still God. And we worship Him as such. Secondly, we pray that we have the spirit and the courage of the early apostles who paid a price for preaching the name of Jesus who paid a physical suffering price, and yet they count it worthy, they rejoice, counted worthy, to suffer for preaching the gospel. What about you and me? If we suffer a bit for the gospel, will we stop or will we continue? It's, very, it's not very popular to talk about the gospel to our family, to our friends, our neighbours. But, Will we do it if God opens the door? If God asks, either a family or a good friend asks you, hey, what's this? Uh, why you go to church every Sunday? Uh? What's about God? Uh? Why you pray before meals? What would you say? I think these are situations that we need to think through, prepare, pray through. And may God grant us the courage to continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Words, if we need to, but much more by the life that we live, our attitude towards people, our willingness to serve, our willingness to be different. To be different. Okay, I think that's important for you and I to remember.